There's something about the sea that really gets the imagination going. For the longest time, the sea was the number one choice for long distance travel. If you wanted to get somewhere thousands of kilometers away, hopping on a ship with sails was your best bet. This was by no means safe or luxurious though. Storms and malnutrition and disease took countless lives in the age of the seafaring explorer. Plus, the sea was the perfect place for criminals to skirt the law. Once out on the big blue expanse, they would be free to do as they pleased without fear of being caught and brought in to be executed. Although, they would often be picked up by the long arm of the law upon returning to shore. All the more reason to remain at sea. So with all this death and criminality, you know there's going to be some ghosts haunting those high seas. Tales of revenge, unfinished business, and souls being gambled away are par for the course, as common as jerked meat and scurvy. Lots of grog horrors too, I'm sure. Hello horror heads and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. I'm your horror host, Keegan Hughes, and today we're counting down the top 5 scary ghost pirates who haunt the seas. Grab your cutlass and chug some rum because these fellas don't mess around. Before we get started, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more swashbuckling stuff. Yar! <laughs> Let's get going. Starting us off at number 5, we have Yellow Jack. We're going to set sail on a weird one to start us off. If you're a flag enthusiast, you might see the ending of this one coming from a mile away, but we'll get there in a minute. So the legend of Yellow Jack starts upon a spice and gold filled ship preparing to leave the Indies and head back home. The crew was accounted for, the cargo was secure, the captain was feeling mwah, nice. Then at the last second, a mysterious figure asked if they had room for one more. Feeling pretty good about their haul, they welcomed this extra pair of helping hands on board. Wrong move. Turns out this was a disreputable lad known as Yellow Jack with a reputation so abhorrent that the ship was forbidden to enter any port she called upon. For ages the crew sailed from port to port hoping that someone would let them dock, but it never happened. They were forced to endlessly cruise the seas, running lower and lower on supplies. Patience too. Eventually the crew went mad and committed mutiny before they all murdered each other. Some say the ship is still sailing. The ghosts of these sea locked sailors manning the helm. Someday they may find a port that will take them and they will finally be able to rest. In the meantime, they will sail the seas, infecting other ships with the same madness that Yellow Jack caused. Now this is a spooky, ghostly story in its own right, but it could also be a reference to a different ship killer at the time. Disease. The Yellow Jack is a flag flown by ships infected with plague, cholera, and other nasty, fast spreading diseases. So, Yellow Jack itself could be a metaphor for disease, and ports weren't letting them in because of quarantine procedures. Absolutely fascinating, and it would also make a killer movie. A pirate quarantine body horror. Think The Thing meets Wreck meets Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh damn. Coming in at number 4, we have the Caliucci, a Chilean ship sailing around an island known for its terrible storms. Shining white sides, three masts with five sails, blood red. The ship sails independent of any human input. Sure, there's a ghost crew, but the Caliucci is known for being sentient. The ship has a mind of its own, it'll glide along the water at incredible speeds and is able to submerge and continue navigating underwater, similar to the famous Flying Dutchman. When it passes, folks say you can hear the crew cackling for a brief moment. It's a ship known for the merriment of its ghostly crew. They throw parties often and hop around on one leg. The folks on board often only have one leg because the other is folded behind their back, similar to another Chilean mythological entity. Top off their strange looks and mannerisms, some crew members have backwards faces, terrifying all who lay eyes upon them. Some say the Caliucci is manned by sailors both dead and alive, dragged from the depths and snagged off passing ships. Another legend says that the ship is piloted by the souls of the drowned, brought aboard by water spirits and granted the gift of life in exchange for their servitude. Not so sure that's a good deal, you know, life eternal but you'll always be on a stinky ship. Maybe the parties are just that sick. Merchants who trade with Caliucci supposedly become very wealthy afterwards, and anyone who has laid eyes upon it wears a crooked smile forever. Again, interesting deal. Lots of money, crooked smile. I guess you could afford a dentist and some plastic surgery at that point. Coming in at number 3, we've got the ghost ship of the Northumberland Strait. Yes, Canadian ghost pirates. That pretty much sums up my career aspirations right there. I don't know if that means I would be pirating software related to ghosts or actually becoming a phantom upon the Northumberland Strait, but I don't really care as long as my title involves the words Canadian, ghost, 
and pirate. But back to the actual tale at hand. This ghost ship is said to sail when it's on fire within the Northumberland Strait. What is the Northumberland Strait? It is a body of water that separates Prince Edward Island from Nova Scotia and New Brunswick in eastern Canada. Now you all know some Canadian geography. I'm so proud of you. The story dates back over 200 years when people started reporting a beautiful schooner catching fire and being engulfed in flames as people watched from shore. Anyone who has ever attempted a rescue mission finds that the ship completely disappears before they can reach it. Apparently the ship shows up before a northeast wind for warning terrible storms. Some say it's just an example of St. Elmo's fire, a rare weather condition involving the ionization of air molecules in order to produce a faint glow, but those who have seen the ship ablaze say that it was much too bright to be explained away like that. The prevailing story is that a pirate made a pact with the devil to protect and hide his treasure, and in return, he and his crew would sail forever on the burning ship. A pact was made as the ship was burning down and would soon sink along with the treasure. In the end, folks claim that their fate was revenge for the terrible deeds they had done in their days of piracy, like their own personal floating hell. Coming in at number two, we have Baron Falkenberg. A tale of lovers scorned, brothers bashed, and dice rolled. This pirate haunts Germany's North Sea and has been for over 600 years. Baron Falkenberg was a relatively wealthy member of high society, planning to propose to the village's most beautiful maiden. Then his long lost brother returned with newly found riches and proposed to her first. At the wedding, the Baron became so upset with his brother that he clubbed him over the head with a bottle of champagne. Classy. Naturally, the brother dropped dead. Seeing this, his bride ran away, claiming that she'd rather die than be with the Baron. Ouch. So the Baron did what any rational fratricidal maniac would do, and stabbed her in the heart. How romantic. Then he ran away to the beach where he was accosted by a shady man on a boat. This mysterious figure invited him to the ship where he came from, which was anchored offshore a little ways out. The Baron accepted and rode his way to the great grey behemoth. Since entering, nobody has seen him disembark and he's been at sea for centuries. The ship he boarded always seems to be heading due north and flickers of blue flame. Some passers-by claim to have seen the Baron himself playing dice with the devil in order to take back control of his soul. Unfortunately, it appears to be very difficult to win a game of chance against the devil. An additional caveat that can be added is that there are those who will claim that the story of the Baron is also connected to a Norse ghost story. The story tells the tale of a Viking sea captain who stole a magic ring from the gods. As punishment for his crimes, he was turned into a living skeleton covered in fire, condemned to spend the rest of eternity affixed to the mast of a ghostly longship. Whether the two stories are about the same ship, it's hard to say. However, I think we can all agree that a flaming skeleton pirate it's pretty badass. And finally at number one, we have the Flying Dutchman. We saved the most well known for last. The legendary ghost ship is said to glow with ghostly light as it sails the seven seas. It will attempt to send messages to land or to people long dead if hailed. Unfortunately, nobody really wants to hail this ship, as the sight of it is seen to be a portent of doom. Like most ghostly ships, the Dutchman can never make port and is doomed to sail the oceans forever. It's theorized that the spectral seafarer had been rounding the treacherous Cape of Good Hope when it encountered a sudden storm. The hatches were battened down and the captain swore he would push right through come hell or high water. And it turns out a little bit of both were on the menu. For his recklessness with his ship and crew, the captain was divinely punished. He was condemned to sail the seas for eternity, serving as a warning to other mariners of bad weather and the cost of hubris. Sightings of the Dutchman have been reported since the 18th century, with many notable scallywags and scurvy dogs laying eyes on the ghastly vessel. Even Prince George of Wales described seeing a ship glowing with a strange light. If you see a ship with skeletons dancing in the rigging, steer clear. It might look like fun, but the captain will try to lure other vessels onto the rocks to ensure nobody else can pass the cape. Sheesh. Remind me not to take a long sailing trip. What did you think of this motley crew of scurvy dogs? Any ghost pirates you think should have made the cut? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's have a quick look at some of your more psychotic ones from horror movies that should have won an Oscar. Jared Schenke says, Anthony Hopkins, not Perkins. That's okay though, Perkins did play another homicidal murderer. I hope you will all forgive my Freudian slip, considering all the Freudian themes in Psycho. I was talking about both Silence of the Lambs and Psycho for a bit, and I must have mixed up the two Anthonys without realizing. 
My bad. Zackzilla says, John Carpenter's The Thing. The fact that it didn't at least get best effects is criminal. One of the greatest movies of all time, I say. I agree. However, just like The Shining, The Thing was pretty much universally panned at the time of its release. People just weren't ready for that level of excellence. James F says, talent and quality don't win Oscars, money does. Unfortunately, that seems to be the case. They don't call it an Oscars campaign for nothing. Donate now. Kazahana225 says, Horror movies get snubbed so often that they deserve their own award show. Top 5 scary videos should organize one online. Hey, maybe someday. But in the meantime, Fangoria does a great one every year. I think voting's actually open to the public now, so go check that out. And Mad Magician Karos says, Keegan, you're right. I'll never watch an awards show again unless that delightful Billy Crystal's involved. You'll probably be a happier, healthier person for it. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.